right, we are back as the clock ticks down on these negotiations over the debt crisis. Republican presidential candidate Ron Paul is criticizing both sides, really, for rushing into any deal. He is launching a new campaign ad in New Hampshire and Iowa to point out the failure he believes of past debt deals. Take a look and then we'll talk to him. This August, the next chapter will be written. A defining moment. Fourteen trillion in debt, millions unemployed, the dollar in decline. We know where they stand. But will our party's leaders repeat the mistakes of the past? Will they choose compromise or conviction? One candidate has always been true. Ron Paul, cut spending, balance the budget, no deals. Looks like a summer blockbuster you got there. Uh, joined now by Congressman Paul, Ron Paul. Uh, he's a presidential candidate as well. Good to see you, sir. Welcome. Thank you very much. So talk to me a little bit about, you know, your, what, another part of this ad goes on to really draw a lot of parallels between the last time this happened under Ronald Reagan and promises right. that were made in terms of by Democrats in terms of the spending cuts that would happen uh, if indeed the debt ceiling were raised. And, and boy, we're hearing a lot of that same language today, aren't we? Same thing, and that's why I'm, I'm a real skeptic. I've been around in Washington for a while, and too often there are promises, if you just do this, if you just say, uh, you know, uh, raise the debt limit, we're going to behave ourselves. So uh, it, it continues, but I don't think it can be solved that way because they don't talk about why we spend the money. And the decisions we have to make are a lot more than budgetary. We have to decide whether we are going to be the policemen of the world, whether we can sustain the entitlement system, whether we can prop up the government by always printing the money when we need it through the Federal Reserve. They don't address any of that. And uh, therefore, you know, I'm going to remain skeptical and I think we should stay, stay true to our principles. And the best principles stay true to, and we wouldn't have been in this trouble, is follow the limitations placed in the Constitution. All right. I want to play a piece of sound from the news conference today from President Obama. Uh, and he's, he's basically saying that uh, Republican members of the House and the, and the Senate uh, are not listening to their constituents out there. Let's play this and we'll, and we'll get your thoughts on it. The proposal that I was discussing with uh, Speaker Boehner fell squarely in line with what most Republican voters think we should do. So the question is, at what point do folks over there start listening to the people who put them in office? Now's a good time. <laughs> what do you think about that, Congressman Paul? Well, I'd, I'd wonder how he can be the ultimate expert on exactly what Republican voters are thinking. But, uh, you know, that is very, very important. But the people I talk to and who encourage me are the ones who want us to stick to the principles of our promises and, and our oath of office with the Constitution. So that's our first obligation. But if he would, if the president would come up and say, well, 53 percent of the Republicans want no cuts in entitlements and they don't want to back off on any military spending, that doesn't convince me that that's the right thing to do. So we have to balance all that. We have to believe in something. We have to get the endorsement from the people. Then you don't have to always work on this compromising all the time. I, th I believe much more in uh, you know, bringing people together and working with uh, different groups of people who agree for different reasons on these same issues. I, and, and I think there's too little yeah. of that. Talk to me a little bit about this cut, cap, and balance plan that is going to be put forth next week uh, in Congress. And, and the president said a couple of times, you know, if they would just come to me with a serious plan, he says it's a serious moment in history, uh, he says it's a huge opportunity, and if uh, folks in Congress would just present a serious plan to him, he would be, uh, he'd be on board with that, according to what he said today. Well, yes, and I think this is meant to be a serious plan, uh, but I doubt if the president will go along with it. But uh, I, I even have problems with it because if it were serious, uh, you know, the, the, the cuts would not be so meager and we would address the structural problems. Uh, so therefore, uh, I, don't see, I don't see the two sides coming together on that because uh, both sides are still working uh, for political power and one, one gamesmanship, you know, get one up on the other person. So uh, it may come about, and I had predicted they would raise the debt limit, but how that's going to happen in the next couple of weeks, I'm not exactly sure. Hey, would you be in favor of, you know, you talk about the structural underpinnings of our financial system. Uh, and one of the things that, that perhaps needs to be addressed there is real tax reform. And as a result,
result of real tax reform, some would say that if you level the playing field and lower the overall corporate tax rate, uh, you're going to get new revenues that are brought into the government because you'll be eliminating these loopholes. Are you in favor of that? Oh, uh, absolutely. And that is a structural change that we should deal with. And a lot of Republicans would, uh, you know, be in agreement with that. But, it, but it's tough because the opposition paints this as, oh, the Republicans only just want to pander to the rich. Uh, but if you don't have capital, uh, you can't have new jobs and you can't have right. investments. This idea that you get capital from the Federal Reserve is a ridiculous idea. Uh, you need savings. That's why we need to bring home all those savings that the corporations right. have made overseas so that we have the capital to start our economy growing yeah. again. That, that, that's an idea that needs to be discussed. Uh, Congressman Paul, thank you so much. Always good to see you. Thank you very much.